Good morning. It's nice to see you all. Are you? Are we live yet? I'm not even sure whether or not we're live. Um, I'm hoping, Chris, I'm not standing here with my head cut off. Uh, as you all can see, um, once again, I'm in the kitchen. I'm in my kitchen and I'm happy in my kitchen. Uh, right, so before we begin, First of all, I would like to say, I'm so excited this morning, I'd like to say good morning to my spirit guide, Gregor, who as always is standing to my right side. My daddy, who as always is licking his lips, he likes this one, uh, is standing to my left side. And I just spotted my brother just before we went live this morning, who is waving at me. So that's pretty nice too. So uh, we're having a family gathering. And of course, good morning, Chris. Good morning, good morning, wherever you are. Would you like to tell us where you are? Hi, Rosemary. Um, I'm in Vermont. And hello, everyone who's joining us. Well, uh, do we have anybody there yet? <laughs> you do have a couple people logged on. We'd love to hear where they're from. Yes, totally. It, they they haven't typed it in yet, though, Rosemary. We're waiting. Oh, so sorry. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know what? I'm just going to uh, start start this off. So today we are. <coughs> excuse me. Today we are making. Um, creme patissiere, which is another word for another uh, um, way of saying we're making pastry cream, everybody. You know, in England, uh, we have these, uh, they're called vanilla slices, and it's two pieces of puff pastry, nice crispy puff pastry, with this delicious uh, pastry cream in the middle. Um, pastry cream is one of those things that you can they're so versatile. You can put it in tarts. You can, uh, you can uh, just uh, put it in pastries. You can uh, put it in meringues. You can do anything you like with it. It's really, or you can have it just all by itself, which is really good. So, um, all right. So that's what we're doing this morning. So um, why don't we just get going? So we're making uh, the uh, pastry cream, but then I'm going to show you how to make meringues also some little baby meringues so for the pastry cream we start off with three egg yolks i don't know how well you can see that chris we can see it well in to that goes two ounces of regular white caster sugar straight in and as always i have all of my ingredients and everything that i'm going to need on this board and as soon as i use them off the board there you go now we have um corn flour or i think in america you call it corn starch we've got one ounce of this with a little tiny pinch of salt right in there and this goes in now are you thinking this is the easiest this is the easiest recipe that I've ever had. It really is the easiest recipe. There are one or two tricks to it. That goes off there now. So, okay. We also have, and I'm only going to be able to show you part of this because this takes a little bit too long for this show. However, we've got 16 ounces of regular full-fat milk. And I've got a non-stick pan. I don't think you can see this. In here, there's my non-stick pan. I'm going to put this milk in here, and then here we go. I'm actually going to do that later on. Um, I'm going to whisk all of this together, make a really nice. And I've got this great whisk, and you just press down on it. Now you can use any kind of whisk, or you can use a wooden spoon. I just find it easier with a whisk and also another little tip for those of you who who uh, you know how you start doing something and the bowl starts to slip all over the place uh, I've got this nice little rubber square here that I put the bowl on so it's non-slip so it grips the bowl and here we go oh can you see it flying all over the place I'm stirring and whisking at the same time and just imagine now that as I'm doing this, I've got that milk, 
and I've got it on a really sort of a medium heat. Uh, we don't want it on high because we don't want to burn the cream and we don't want to burn the pan in the bottom. Um, so it's, it's sort of doing its thing. So as I am doing my thing and we've got now, look at this. Uh, there we go. So um, I'm going to show you what this looks like. So and then I'm going to describe what we have to do with it. So okay, so we mix it all together. Because I've whisked it and I've used this amazing whisk, it's nice and smooth, no lumps, no bumps. You don't want to have any lumps or bumps in there. Make it nice and smooth. But you you saw it takes just a few seconds to do it. The milk, I want the milk to warm. I don't want it to boil. But I want it to be nice and warm and once it's warm I'm going to throw it right in here. This is the trick. As I put the milk in, the warm milk in, I'm going to continue whisking. So again it's mixing really really well and once it's all mixed together, whisked together, I'm going to put it all back into the saucepan. I'm going to use a non-stick whisk, a rubber whisk, and I'm going to bring it all the way back up, the whole thing. I'm going to cook it. So it doesn't take very long. Once you find that, the, and keep whisking, the trick is keep whisking, keep moving the mixture around, keep scraping it off the bottom, keep moving, moving, moving that whisk around. Um, once it starts to thicken, take the pan off of the heat we'll i'll do this another time and i'll show you but it's hard to do this because we don't we're not a studio you know we don't have cameras all over the place so it we could if if we were in the studio i'd say and now we're going to camera two and i'll show you how to do this but all you have to remember is this keep it moving 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 and then when it starts to thicken as it will do very quickly so you cannot leave it alone and you cannot take your eyes off it it doesn't take very long Remove it from the heat, give it a really, really good whisk, whisk, whisk up. You know, really, really, you know, then put a little knob of butter in there and just whisk it up, whisk it up, and um, then lower the heat a little bit, bring it back onto the heat and watch until it just starts to plop, plop, plop. You don't want it boiling, you just want to see the custard going plop, 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 because we need to make sure that the, the, um, the cornstarch or corn flour is cooked through. So we need it to sort of see that those little bubbles coming up. Once that's done, give it a really good whisking, pour it into a jug or a bowl and put it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. Now, you know what's going to say next, don't you? Da -da -da -da. I love this part. And here is some I made earlier. At seven o'clock this morning, as a matter of fact. Right, so let me put this away. I'm going to use this later. There we go. The good thing about this pastry cream is you can make it days ahead of time because all it is is eggs and milk, a little bit of, tiny bit of butter, cornstarch and so on. I mean, you know, you can keep it in your refrigerator for several days if you, if you want to do. And here, da -da, da -da, da da we have the finished product. Another little tip that you might be interested in. When I cover things in the, especially things like custard uh, or sauces, they'll often, if you put them straight in the fridge, they'll get like a, a skin on the top. We don't really want the skin on the top. Um, in order to prevent the skin from forming, and you can do this with hot sauces on the stove if you just have to leave them on the stove. You want to keep it warm, you want to keep it on the stove. You don't want the skin over it. You put either a piece of film, uh, cling wrap or whatever, or a piece of foil over the top and you poke a little hole in it in the middle. And then the steam comes up but it stops a skin from forming. So that little tips here. Aren't we, aren't we all about little tips? So that's going in the in the trash. Now, here it is. Now, let me see. Let's get a spoon. Uh, all good cooks have to taste, don't they? So, 
I don't know if you can see how thick it is. It's sort of not, you know, you can stir it around and it's nice and uh, nice and creamy. Can you see that, Chris? It's there. It's beautifully smooth and creamy. And of course, the taste test. Oh, delicious. I forgot to mention one more ingredient. Once, excuse me, once you've whisked it all together, add a couple of drops of either vanilla, in this case it's the lemon extract, um, or vanilla, or uh, you can even use coconuts if you're making coconut cream pie, you can put a drop of coconut in there. Um, you can put um, orange rind in there or lemon rind in there if you want to. Anyway, it's really good. So, all right, what shall we do with it? Now we've got it, what shall we do with it? All right, I'm going to move these out of the way. So, you can make your own pastries, you can make your own tarts, you can make your own pastry cases, or in this case, because I wanted to show you two things, two different desserts today. Um, I buy these and they are phyllo shells. I don't know how well you can see them, but they are little frozen uh, pastry cases. Um, put them in the oven for five minutes to crisp them up. Just follow the instructions on the packet or make your own pastry or make your own, uh, you know, cream sizes by sort of, you can, you can, it's so easy to do. Again, we'll do this another time. You buy ready-bought um, puff pastry. If you, I like to make my own, but if you're in a hurry, you buy ready-bought pastry. You do not roll it out. You cut it into the sizes you want it. You put it in the oven up on high. It fluffs up, puffs up. Bingo, you split it and then you fill it with cream or pastry cream or whatever it is you want. Anyway, this is what I did. So I'm going to show you what I have today. So here's my uh, liver pan of tarts. I don't know how well you can see them. Let's move that there. Um, look how cute they are. Look, see that? Look how little and cute and lovely they are. And they're just beautiful. They're nice and crispy. I don't know if you can hear the sound. Nice and crispy, delicious, yummy, yummy, yummy. And flaky. All right. So I like to use a small lemon ball thing. I use this for so many different things. I use it for dough when I'm making cookies. I use it for all sorts of things. Today I'm going to get this cream. I'm going to scoop some out, like just like that. And I'm going to fill it. Look, is that look how don't they look good, Chris? What do you think? They're very cute, and we're getting some comments about yummy from the <laughs> chat room. However, now um, I like cherries. These are frozen cherries that have been thawing and draining. But I also love the little baby mandarin oranges. So you can top it. Let's top one with an orange and on the top there. Now look, I'm going to put them on a plate. I'm going to do a few because, well, you know, I'm here and my friend Mary Lou is coming over later, I think, and maybe we'll I'll give some to her uh, grandson and family. Let's put a cherry on this. I love cherries. Let's put a cherry on that one. Can you see how easy this is? The creme patissiere, the pastry cream, really doesn't take that long, but you do have to let it really cool really well. So, and again, oops, and again. What it does when you're using the, this, um, where am I? What it does when you're using that little melon ball is it sort of makes a nice little dome on the top there. Look, can you see, look how cute that is. Oh, there we go. We'll do one more of these. And then we're going to do some real cooking. Because this isn't real cooking, is it? I mean, but you know what? You produce it and people think, wow. And especially if you make your... Come on, get out there. Especially if you make your own um, uh, pastry cases or whatever. But you can buy pastry cases. Especially if you make those, you know, that's a good thing too. And I do have to say that I do like to make my own. Right. So I'm moving this to the side. And I should be filling all of these later on. But for now, 
we've got these to show you. Simple, easy, no fuss. No fuss, and if you're having a party, these are great for a party. Uh, they do keep, you can keep them in the, fr I've, I've sort of kept mine for up to, what, three or four days, if they last that long. I don't, can you see those, Chris? They look, they look really cute. Rosemary. Oh, they cute, right? What, how long does it take for you to cook up the mixture with the milk and the mixture that you just made? Okay, so once you've got all your ingredients together, which I always like to do that, it's very important for me. I've got everything measured and ready and on my board, so I know what I'm doing. It takes as long as it takes to heat the milk through, remember not to boiling. While that is working, you're whisking. So I'm going to say less than a minute. Um, then you pour the warmed milk into your mixture, whisking all the time. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And you pour it all back into the pan. You turn the heat. I use a, about a, a five, sometimes a six. I'm going to tell you it might take another minute or two for the but for it to start um, thickening up because remember that you've partially cooked the milk anyway so another minute or two so it's a very quick and easy the length of time it takes is for it to cool down so you, you know I made this at seven o'clock this morning by by the time I got everything together made the pastry cream um, it was 10 past seven this morning, I think that started. And by the time I'd got the pastry cream in the refrigerator, it was 20 past, something like that. So 10, 15 minutes maybe. Now you might say, well, I know what I'm doing. I do. This is the rule here. This is the trick with pastry cream or any kind of a custard. You can't take your eyes off it when it's on that stove and there's heat there. You've got to keep going, going, going soon as you see it starting to thicken up and you will see it thickening up immediately remove it from the uh, from the uh, heat you add this little tiny bit of butter keep stirring 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 just makes it sort of nice and gives a nice shiny effect you don't have to put the butter in if you don't want to um, and you keep stirring again you bring it back to the heat for seconds wait for it to go clip 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 plop 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 you're done Add your um, whatever, if you want to add um, either vanilla or if you want to add, as I did this morning, uh, I made one that I added um, uh, a lemon uh, extract and one that I added orange e extract. So, you know, and you stir it in, whisk it in, put it in a thing, bingo, and there it is. I mean, it, you couldn't be easier. So we're looking at, to get all your ingredients together, <laughs> way less than a half an hour if it's taking you a half an hour it's because it's your first time and you're a bit nervous about it if for any reason now this is the good thing about these custards you know if for any reason whatsoever it does go lumpy throw the whole thing in a a blender or in a, in a, we say a liquidizer or a blender give it one spurt two spurt <laughs> ding 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 and it's done and it's all nice and smooth and you're done um the only thing you have to make sure of is don't turn your heat too high that it's going to burn the bottom and if for any reason you do burn the bottom as you're taking the custard out of the pan don't scrape the bottom don't scrape the bottom bit if you burned it this is why i like to use non-stick for my cup for any kind of custard whatsoever so let's put this uh, away. You know what I'm going to do? Um, because, because I just can't resist. Now, shall I have orange or, or we should we should have a, a vote? Should I have orange? Should I have orange? You know what I'm going to do, don't you, Chris? Uh, should we have orange or should we have cherry? Um, I love cherries. Let's have a cherry. Now, while I'm getting the other stuff that I'm going to make for you, I'm just going to this in my mouth. Chris, well, we're going to ask you a question then, Rosemary. Oh, go ahead then, quick. We know that you said your daddy and your brother are there with you, as is Grey Eagle. Yes. How does taste factor into this for those in the spirit world? Okay, well, 
if I were making something that I didn't like to eat, I would be asking Gregor, did I put enough sugar in? Now, he thinks there's too much sugar in as I'm talking to you, because I just tasted it and he's had a little taste. A little bit too much sugar. There's only two ounces of sugar. To me, it tastes perfect. My dad is laughing. He says, just kind of put it in your mouth. Let's eat. Let's all eat it. Because as I'm eating it, we're all can everything is energy, right? So they'll get this flavor, this flavor that I'm eating, we sort of combine together. But they're perfectly capable of also tasting on their own. In fact, my dad has just put his finger <laughs> into the pastry cream. So uh, this is very funny. Um, right. So moving on. You talk, you give me some comments well, as we go along. Well, um, I've got to eat it. Haven't I? I've got to eat it. The good, you know what the good thing is about this? It can go right in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did ask. You said, you know, if we were to put it to a vote, what, what do they think you should have? And Judith piped right in. I think you should have orange. But you chose the cherry, so we know. Too bad. Right, go and put these over here. Um. We asked early oh, on where people were from, and Barb is here from Illinois. Uh, Carolyn's here from Nebraska. Eric's here from California. Chris is from Ontario, Canada. Uh, let's see if somebody wow. else said where they're from. Um, Julie's here from West Yorkshire. Oh, hi, Julie from West Yorkshire. Oh, what it, am I doing? Can you see I'm preparing for the next round? You know, when I have dinner parties, I have to say, even though I make more work for myself, I like to have at least two choices of dessert because if you don't like one, you can have the other. In England, we always have cheese after the meal. Uh, in America, it's very weird because people have cheese and wine before the meal. Excuse me. Right, now... Let me have a little drink here. This is my Harvey's Bristol Cream Sherry that I should have drunk last week, but here I am. Okay. Hmm. Judith says, I'm going to dip my spiritual finger into that custard. Mm -mm -mm. And she's from <laughs> Georgia. It's very smooth. It's very creamy. It's uh, sweet, but not too sweet. Although Greg will argue in that point. But for me, it's perfect. And when you have them all out and you do, you know, an array of them on a plate, they really do look quite spectacular. And people say, oh, look at those. I've never seen those before. And then they eat one and you can't just have one. I'm looking, I'm eyeing at them, I'm not going there. Uh, you can't just have one, you have to have more than one. Right, let's get on with this. Otherwise, we're never going to get it done. Meringues. It seems to be one of those desserts you guys have to wait. It seems to be one of those desserts that people get nervous about. There is my trusty one, my favorite, favorite uh, kitchen appliances. I've had one of these. This is a Kenwood mixer. And it's not an industrial, but it's a sort of like the step down. It's a major, Kenwood major. And you can buy them a little bit bigger than this. And you can buy them with a metal bowl as well. And I have a metal bowl with this one. So um, let's see. Remember we made, uh, we used three egg whites, right? When we made the custard, we used three egg whites. Uh, sorry, three egg yolks. What do we do with the whites? Well, now we know what we're going to do with the whites. We're going to throw them in the bowl here like that okay get rid of that oh we're we're getting rid of stuff right left and center we are chris going to make a noise now you can make meringues without a powerful whisk but it is hard work you can get an electric whisk a hand whisk an electric hand whisk it's a little bit more hard work but it does work but you'll see with this, we're going to make noise. Cover your ears. It's only going to last for about 30 seconds. I'm going to put my whisk, and for those of you who have electric whisks, it's so easy to do this. I remember my daughter, where I used to make pavlovas all the time, which is like a bird's nest of meringue. I made meringues 
when she was a little girl all the time, it was one of her favorites. And then one day she said to me, can you show me how to do a, a meringue? I want to have a dinner party. So I told her how to do it. She said to me afterwards, I didn't know it was that easy. <laughs> well, the truth is, it is that easy. This is not a French meringue. This is not a fancy meringue. There are only, um, let's see, there are only three ingredients. Really, there are only two ingredients. Um, one of those ingredients uh, is the egg white. The other of those ingredients is sugar. So for every single egg white, so there are three egg whites in there, I'm going to put in one ounce of, uh, of um, caster sugar. Uh, sorry, of granulated sugar. There. And I'm throwing it in. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Get ahead of myself. First of all, we're going to whisk these babies. Are you ready? Keep, you know, keep. Hold on. If anyone has a question for Rosemary, this might be the time to ask. We can hear you, Rosemary. Can, can you hear me? Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> How is that, Chris? <laughs> Very good. We have two questions. Judith. Well, well, that was less than a minute, just so you know here. And I'm just uh, looking at this it's sort of foam, but it's a stiff foam. I don't know if you can all see that, but it's, you whisk it till it's white and stiff. I might just, I'll come back to the question. I might just give it another 10 seconds. Okay. That was Eric's question. He was asking, how stiff are the whites beaten? Well, let me see. Uh, I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I'll sort of, hard to say, but stiff. Stiff enough. Can you see? Can you see it's a wobbly? And it's nice and stiff and thick, but it drops. So, you'll get used to it, but as stiff as you can. The only problem with this is, if you do meringues and you over beat them, they'll turn back to liquid and we don't want that. In goes the three ounces of caster sugar and then we're going to make noise again. There we go. Let's uh, put that there. And ready? Oh, God. been whisking I just measured out some super fine sugar and you know what I'm not happy with it so why am I not happy with this let's get another bowl and do it again but you whisk it until it's really 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 nice and thick can you see that it's clinging hold of the of the whisk we can so uh, I don't know why, but I was not happy with this measurement. So 
I want now three ounces, remember, three egg yolks, three ounces of caster sugar, three ounces of granulated sugar, and then three ounces of caster sugar, or in this country, you would call it super fine sugar. And, and, and a clarification, a Rosemary, I think it's important to clarify something because when I hear you say super fine sugar, my yeah. mind automatically goes to confectionery sugar and that is not no. what you have there, right? No, it is uh, granulated sugar, which is ground really, really fine. And I actually, oh, I was right. Look at that. I was right. I was questioning myself. Right. Now, so, I mean, look, how long have we taken? Two minutes, three minutes? I'm gonna get rid of that. Normally, I would scrape off <laughs> every little bit of this meringue because, you know, waste not, want not, and all of that stuff. So I am going to scrape it off a little bit, but I'm going to be good and not keep you waiting for so long. You want to know now what I'm going to do, don't you? I'm getting rid of the whisk. Let's put this is in the way. Let me just do this for now. Okay, now it's very thick now. The meringue is really, can you see how thick it is? Yes. Okay, almost missed the ball. Now I'm going to add the three ounces of super fine, or as we say in England, caster sugar, super fine sugar. And we're going to throw that in. We're throwing stuff all over the place, aren't we, these days? And guess what now? I'm going to gently stir all of that sugar in. I'm going to try not to be too harsh with it. I'm going to what they call folding. It's folding is literally you bring your spoon in, you turn it around, can you see? To so twist it around and you fold it. And you go round and you fold it. And you make sure that all of that lovely, lovely sugar is right in there. And I'm going to get a knife and here we go so now can you see it now the meringue is ready so i'm going to show you how to make quinelles I'm saying what's a quinelle i'll show you exactly what a quinelle is just another fancy word for putting two spoons together and playing around with your stuff you can if you would like why not why wouldn't you you can, if you like, get an icing bag and pipe, or a piping bag, I should say, and you can pipe. But I don't have time for that nonsense right now. Put this away. Done with that. So I've got my nice, thick, 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 thick meringue. And now I have my baking sheet. We're going to move that out of the way. Now, Chris, you need to tell me, if you would, how much you see of this. I see so almost all of your baking pan. Pardon? We see almost all of your baking pan. Great. You tell me what you can and can't see. Can you see this? You can see this bowl, right? Yes. So, quinelles. Two dessert spoons. You can use bigger spoons if you want bigger meringues. You can use smaller spoons if you want smaller meringues, or you can get a piping bag and pipe. So a quinelle is simply this. So you take a piece, you get it on the spoon, you're using the spoon to mold. Now, I've done this for a long time, so I'm quick with it. might take you a little bit. But what I'm after is I'm after sort of nice, like a nice sort of uh, slight bump in it, like that. And that is a quinelle. And then I'm going to just ease it off. And I'm using a parchment paper. And then I'm going to do another one. And you sort of just, you use the spoon to mould. That's a quinelle. And I'm going to just see how I'm sort of, I don't know how well you see it, but I'm 
smoothing it over so when it goes onto the onto the onto the tray it's going to be nice and smooth on the top not too bumpy on the top i'm leaving them a little bit apart if you can pull the tray a little bit closer to you we'll be able to see what you've put on it there you go is that better yeah okay okay all right then so can you see me making these quenelles How easy absolutely get rid of all of that and off you go with this da -da -da. Now, you'd be surprised if I tell you that I made the, some of these yesterday. Can you see this better? Yes. Okay, okay. So we're going to do a couple more. And then, like magic, like the magician I am. <laughs> oh, do you like being in my kitchen with me? Have we got any questions, Chris, while I'm looking about with this, making my... Uh, Carolyn wants to know what is that thing you are measuring your sugar with? What thing? I think it was your food scale. The oh, one my, that you put in the scales? drawer. Yeah. Uh, kitchen scales. Ta da! Kitchen scales. Just a regular set of kitchen scales. Uh, you know, if you want to know the makes and names of the things that I like to use, by all means, email us and I'll tell you. Because I do have my favourites. I have to tell you that I have two favourite uh, things in my kitchen, uh, pieces of equipment in my kitchen that I really would hate to do without. One of them is my Kenwood. I've been, I've been using one since I was in my early 20s. Actually, my ex-husband bought me one for, for a Christmas present one year. Oh, you can do so much with it. That one plopped, but never mind. Uh, so I'm going to say that three of these uh, egg whites are probably going to make at least, I'm going to say at least eight to 12 quinelles. Ease it gently onto the thing and you can see the sort of you, you're not you know you're not just plopping it on you're molding it and you're sort of making a nice uh, shape with it which does make a difference when they cook and you don't really cook them either you dry them out more but when they when you cook them when they're in the oven they do tend to swell a little bit so you do need to make sure that you have a uh, space how are you spelling this word quinelle, Roseberry? What am I? A dictionary? Yes. Q-U-I-N-E-L-L-E. -E, I do Just believe. like it sounds. And uh, if anybody wants to correct me, feel free. feel free. I don't think everybody knows how many crossword puzzles you do. Oh, yeah, I'm a wordy. I'm a big, big wordy. All right, so I've got enough to do at least um, another two, if not another four. But, hey, you get the picture, right? You get the idea. And once these are done, you can put them in. It depends now. When I made mine um, that I'm going to show you that are already uh, done, I made them last night and I left them in the oven on 100, which really is sort of mostly blowing cooler air. You're not looking to bake them necessarily, you're looking for them to dry out. You can leave them for hours. If you want them to be done quickly, uh, you would try 200 to 225 degrees, that's Fahrenheit. Um, but be very careful because if you cook them too too high, they'll they'll go brown on the top. Not that there's anything wrong with that, and they'll only be very very light pale brown. But I like mine to be white, so I left the ones I'm going to show you now. And I made some earlier. Uh, I love them. You know when you see it on the kit on the kitchen shows and they say, "And here we have one that we made earlier." That's what I'm going to do any minute now. So <laughs> I made some earlier, and. Um, uh, so I can show you now 
exactly what we're going to do with them. You'll be surprised. But you see how easy it is. If you have a, a powerful electric mixer, it's very easy. But you see how easy it is to do them and how you can't really go wrong with them. People are so nervous and so afraid about meringues. But don't be, because honestly, you can't really ruin them. The only way you can ruin them is if you overbeat. But if you keep your eye on them, you're fine. Now, I'm going to, I'll finish off these later, but then I'm going to put them in the oven and I'm going to leave them uh, at about 125 to one, one maybe, yeah, one, 120 to 125, something like that. And I'm going to leave them in for several hours. And I'm going to show you what they look like when they're ready, when they're done. So let's put these in my oven. Sharon wants to know, is this similar to a pavlova? It is exactly a pavlova. That's exactly what this is. Um, you get, you do the meringues. You get your um, parchment paper, as, as I, I just saw. But instead of doing the individual ones, you sort of make a round uh, on the bottom. And then you build up the sides because you can see this is it's like it's like molding clay in a way you, you know you can you can uh, you know you can you can mold it and you sort of you know you put spoonfuls around the side and you can pipe it if you want but i don't and i just you know do get this and play with it make sure there's a hole in the middle and show it in the oven and leave it uh so and you can actually read these if you have the oven on low enough and you go to bed late enough or you get up early enough, you can actually leave them in the oven overnight. You just have to make sure that you cool them. And then with the pavlova, which is just a big bird's nest, you then fill it with whipped cream and fruit of your choice. Let's put this over here. Julie's, now, saying, that she, Julie's saying that she used uh, pineapple for her pavlova. It used to be her favorite. Okay, you've got to be careful with certain fruits Obviously it worked for you, but not anything that's too juicy. Because if you use juicy fruit, it's going to, if you, if you eat it straight away, if you put it on the table, if you add the fruit and put it on the table and eat it straight away, it's great. But any juicy fruits are going to leak through and they're going to really um, do a number on your meringue. I bet it would taste nice if you had pineapple juice it's soaked into meringue. But nevertheless, you're going to, you're, if you're not careful, if you use too juicy a fruit, your pavlova or your or your uh, meringue will break down. Now let's see what let's see what I did. Is this, <laughs> this where we so do the exciting. drum roll? Are you all excited? Everybody should be doing the drum roll. <laughs> so. Oh wow! They even stay white. Well, they stay white if you have them on a really low uh, heat because you're only drying them out, so they stay white. But if you cook them on a higher heat, if you decide at three o'clock in the afternoon you want to make meringues for, for a dinner party that starts at seven or eight, you're gonna to have to have them on a higher heat. So you'll see that there'll be that tinge of brown. Now, how do you tell when these little babies are cooked? Okay, I don't know how I'm going to see if I can lean forward with this because I want you to hear the knocking uh, you know how, is there anybody knocking on my door? <laughs> anybody ringing the bell? <laughs> so, are you ready? So, I wonder if the spirit world would be knocking on our door, Greg, or thinks that's very funny. So let's see. Let's see a knocking sound. Can you hear it, Chris? I did hear the first couple of knocks. Yes. So, you get your knuckle. Knock, knock, knock. If you hear that sound, it means that they're dry the way through. Some people like them gooey in the middle, so just cook them less. I like mine dry and crispy. Uh, okay, I'm going to pick two because I roughly want them the same size. So how about these two little babies here? Oh, I forgot. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've forgotten the most important ingredient in all of this is... Oh, yes, whipped cream, everybody. Now, if you like, you can fill them with the pastry cream we just made. Or you can fill them with cream, whipped cream, double heavy cream. Or you can add ground almonds to the heavy cream and fill them. 
you can do any number of things with this, or you could even fill them with some chopped fruit or whatever. Okay, we're going to do them nice and simple and plain. However, I do have one more thing I have to do, because also, while we've been talking and chatting, I've been melting chocolate. Let's get this thing here. Let's put that there. I like to use bittersweet chocolate. Uh, and you need it just melted chocolate. There. See how, can you see that? Yes. Is that good? That's all very right. good. And all I did was I had a pan of water only a third full whatever you do you put your bowl on the top and you make sure that the bowl is not touching the water underneath so let's move that out of the way some people use the microwave to melt the chocolate i've always been a bit nervous about doing that so i don't do that all right now julie wants to know if it is cooking chocolate it it's a ghirardelli bittersweet which is my favorite, but you can use, I would suggest you don't use white chocolate because it's too sweet. And remember these meringues are all sugar and eggs. <laughs> you want anything sweet. I use bitter sweet chocolate because it just gives that little bite to it and helps with the, with the, you know, the sugar. Um, what am I looking for here? So, right. Again, let's get one of these lovely spoons. I'm going to take this is the simplest thing ever. Can you see what I'm doing, Chris? Because it's white. Yes. I don't want it to blend in with my apron. So a nice, good scoop of uh, thick whipped cream, which I also whipped earlier. I'm going to stick that there. <laughs> then look, everybody, look at this. Then I'm going to do that and squidge. I'm going to put it on a plate. Let's get two more that look the same. I'm going to do this. Oh gosh, can't wait to eat one of these. You can't wait to see me, can you? Because you know when you eat these, it just goes all over your face, right? So we're going to sort of put that there. I don't like that. There, that's better. I'm going to put that there. If you feel inclined, you can actually get those fancy little, you know, paper pastry cake paper cases pretty cases and, and stick them in there but i'm gonna i'm gonna do so i'm going to do three of these we're just gonna put these together how are we doing for time here chris are we good you have about 10 minutes left before the hour okay all right so i'm going to do three of these can you see them yes so now, if you don't want to use these, and you might not want to use them for another week, or even two, put them in an airtight container. Um, I use something like this, and I put foil in there because I, I'm a bit neurotic about it. I want them to stay as dry as possible. So I line it with foil, put foil on the top, put them in there, and they'll keep for oh, days and days. And that's my grandson's around. These are his favorites. So now, if you want to, you can put little bits of fruit on, or you can decorate, you can put sprinkles on, whatever. But I always, with cooking, I like that classic look. So here is my dessert plate. We do need a few more of those little pastries, don't we? You um, might want to pull that closer to you so we can see. There you better? go. Yes. So now watch this, everybody. Chocolate, yummy, yummy, in my tummy. And I'm just going to dribble <laughs> or drizzle. <laughs> Dribbling is when you're kicking ball, isn't it? I'm going to dribble or drizzle. There we go, come on. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Now, can you imagine you do a platter? full of these and you've got your family or you've got your friends and you're having some kind of special party and you fill the platter filled with all of this good stuff. But you can see, 
I'm trying to show you things that are not too difficult. You don't have to be a chef. You don't have to be a genius. Uh, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to know anything technical about this stuff. You can go away from here and absolutely make these things. So let's put that there. And Judith there. is saying beautiful little white clouds. Oh my, my mouth is watering. <laughs> now, what I actually like to do, getting it all stuck all over me. Um, what I also like to do when I'm doing anything that's got chocolate on it like this, and when I make my pavlova and fill it with fruit, I like to drizzle chocolate on the top. Can you? How well can you see that, Chris? Well, not as well as if it was up closer to the camera, but we can still see it. I yeah. think you're going to snap a picture of it, and that'll be on your YouTube channel as the face of your okay. video, right? But what I also I like to do, just because I'm a bit fancy, I like to, you know, let's decorate the cake a tiny bit, the, the plate a tiny bit as well. Why not? Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just making the plate look a, a bit pretty too. There we go. And, uh, okay. So how would I get this to be closer to the camera so you can all see? Oh, God, I'm so chocolatey up. I think you'd have to go around your counter. I'd be, be licking everything now. Wait a minute. <laughs> so imagine that it's full of meringues and full of these beautiful, delicate little little uh, pastries with this creme patissiere. Um, and if I bring it there, can you see it? Hold it up higher. There you go. <sighs> yeah. And there. And That's there so beautiful. Julie says, oh, my words look so good. I'm going to give it a go. Well, you can see, if you follow this video, and you pretty much follow it step by step, and don't be afraid, that's the secret. Let me just show you, let me take one of these meringues. Let's open up one of these babies. Let's have this little one here. Again, knock, knock, it's hard. And if I break it, nice and dry in there if you don't cook them so long there'll be that tiny little bit of gooey stuff which a lot of people like with meringues but look everybody am i mean or what <laughs> oh you didn't drizzle the chocolate on it that shocked me <laughs> all right okay are there any questions there are not we've been asking them as we've been going any comments? If anyone has anything new, please pop them into the chat room. So that's it. Uh, I th the, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, it, so far that's it. Okay, well, next week I'm going to show you all of you, gosh. Oh, that's so good. I'm going to show you how to make my very famous, very dangerous <laughs> margarita. Uh, I'm going to show you a little trick that was told to me by a restaurateur that makes my margaritas really special. I will not be using margarita mix. I will be using a tequila. I'll be using um, uh, an orange liqueur, whichever. I can't remember now what's it called. It's gone out of my head. And I should be using uh, lime juice, um, not the sweetened variety of lime juice, but a, a regular lime juice. Uh, and I'll talk about that and where to get those from. And um, I'm also going to be making another cocktail. And maybe if you're really nice and you make some really nice comments about all of this good food, uh, and if you share, you've got to share with everybody, right? If you do all that sharing and stuff, if you're really good, I'll show you how to make um, a baked brie uh, wrapped in pastry. We'll see if we have time for that. I think, though, that we will. Because you can have that after you've had all of this. Or you can have it before, depending what you feel like doing. Or you can just have it as a little treat. Let me tell you, when you make these things, if you make these for your children, they'll probably say they don't like the cream. 
in that case, you fill them with the pastry cream because they'll love the pastry cream. Uh, so, you know, a lot of kids don't like whipped cream. Anyway, that's it for today. Any more questions, any more comments, Chris, before we end our cooking show for today? Dean says, it reminds me of a Sham tort that my mother would make for my birthday each year. My oh. favorite, add cream and strawberries for mine. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Sounds good to me, Dean. All right, everybody. Well, I think that's it. So <laughs> thank you for joining me today. Uh, what am I going to do with these now? I can't eat them all myself, you know. Uh, I'm going to pack most of those meringues in an airtight container so I'm not tempted to eat them. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, the rest I think I'll just have to, I'll have to just invite friends over and we'll just enjoy a real nice evening of desserts. So until I see you next week. So, okay, let's look at this. We had that delicious cream cheese that we made for our first course with fruit. Uh, then we had, oh, the um, fantastic fish that we made this, uh, last Sunday, which I know some of you have said, I made it, it was delicious. I love the fact that you're attempting uh, what I'm cooking. Uh, and now we have this fabulous dessert. And we're not quite finished because we've got next week is our final uh, Sunday of May. Please celebrate with me the 25th anniversary of the Ethan Rose, the first printing uh, happened on the 19th of May, which is on Wednesday. We'll be doing something very special on Wednesday because not only is it the 25th anniversary, it is also my birthday. So we'll be planning a, a special little treat on my birthday. I think I'm probably going to be reading a story from the Eagle and the Rose and then maybe reminiscing and talking about it a little bit. Um, if you would like to volunteer for our bottom brick, if you would like to know anything more about, well, gosh, by this time next week, the, uh, the webinar, Gregor Speaks, will be over with. But if you still don't have your tickets, go to our website, rosemaryaltair.com. You'll find tickets there. It's going to be fantastic. It's a di direct voice. So you will hear Gregor's words or hear him speak using my voice box. I know it's weird, but it's amazing stuff. And I think you'll thoroughly love it. So keep, keep posted, keep checking. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, at which point, uh, wow, I think then I'm going to go take to my bed and sleep for uh, several hours before we carry on again in June. Thank you for joining us today. Please have a very, very blessed rest of the day. Don't eat too much. Don't get too fat. But really, really go ahead and try these because they are fantastic. They are delicious. And I can tell you, you'll have a fabulous rest of the day. Bye-bye, everybody.